Hello, today we're going to talk about 4.6 completing the square. All right, so the first thing you should probably know how to do is how to solve with square roots. Okay, so solving quadratics with square roots. Okay, so the first example I've got is these two, and notice there's a term missing. We are missing the x term, all right? So all we have is the x squared, okay? Well, if we're just solving for x and you only see one x, we'll get that x by itself. So move the 10 over. Divide by four. And then when we take the square root, okay? X is the square root of nine, but it's not just that right it's not just three because remember think about it negative three squared is also nine okay so remember this all right whenever you put the square root there put plus or minus okay that's a big thing i'm going to keep saying that forever and ever okay when you put the square roots there then you have to put plus or minus because that X could be two things. All right, so why don't you try the next one? All right, we solve this one. We're gonna move the five over. So we get negative 30, then we divide by three. Okay, so now when we take the square root, we're going to put plus or minus. Okay, but now think about your square root. Okay, I can't do that in my calculator, right? That's because it's not a real number, right? It's an imaginary number, so we have to put our i. So that's where our um, previous section comes from, or why we, why we did i's in this chapter. So now you don't put, you're not going to put not real or no solution. You're gonna put your imaginary answer, okay? All right. What if I have an equation that looks like something like this? Okay, well again, still, I have one x, so let's get that one x by itself. Well, I can't move the three out because it's in my parentheses. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of everything around the parentheses, so get rid of that square. So we take the square root, and since we put it there, we put plus or minus, and then we move the three over. Now, okay, a lot of people, when they move the numbers over, they always put it at the end, right? But think about how we write stuff, okay? Complex numbers, right? We always write it as A plus B I. So the I or the radical was always at the end. That's what we wanna do here. So this, this is not how I want you to write your answer. I want you to put this number in front. So write three, plus or minus the square root of seven. Okay, so there's our two answers. Just like in 4.5, we had two answers, okay, unless we had a repeated one. This is actually two answers. It's three plus the square root of seven and three minus the square root of seven. Okay, so you can write it either or. Okay, try number four. All right, so the first thing I do is take the square root. So we put plus or minus. So then we, well, we can simplify that to plus or minus 2i. And we move the 5 over, so it becomes negative 5. So it's either this or you can write it as two answers. Okay or two separate, right, with a comma in between. There you go. Okay, so what if I like completing the square because solving for one variable is super easy, but I don't have that, okay? What if I have x squared and an x, but I wanna do completing the square or something with square roots? Okay, so these are the steps we do to complete the square, okay? It's a very, very useful tool, especially if you plan on going the AA route in IB. Um, 
you know, the more calculus-based math, um, you need to know how to complete the square because you use it a in a lot of applications um, with equations and things like that. So uh, let's see. The first thing is make sure that there is a 1 there, so 1x one squared. So we're good. We're going to make sure, I'm sorry, that was step 2, my bad. <laughs> Move the 3 over and make sure there's a 1. So we've got 1x one squared minus 6x equals positive 3. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this term, okay? We want to rewrite this whole left-hand side as something squared, okay? Well, here, let me write it down here like this, okay? Well, remember, that's just the same thing twice, and I want it to have a negative 6 in the middle, so if it's going to repeat itself, it needs to be negative 3 and negative 3, right? Because that adds up to negative 6, okay? But that multiplies to a positive 9, okay? Because think about it. If we were to FOIL this x minus 3 out, that's x squared minus 6x plus 9. But we only have, sorry, cut off the 9 there, but we only have x squared minus 6x. So that's why we have to add 9 to the left-hand side. Okay? So if we added 9 to the left side of the equation, well, that means we have to add 9 to the right side. Okay? That's what we're trying to do here. Right? Oh, <laughs> you'll see in a minute. We add 9, and we get 12. And this side is x minus 3. Okay, now we've got it set up like the equation, like the last two problems we just did. Okay, so again, what did I just do? I took this number, I took half of it, which is negative 3, and I squared it, which is 9. Okay, so for step number 3, that's when you take negative 6, half it, and square it. And that's what we get is 9, and we added it to both sides. Okay? Then you write the left-hand side as half of that negative 6 in the parentheses, and then it equals the right side. Okay? So if you just keep doing that step, just keep doing it over and over and over again, it's going to make sense. Okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to become more natural, I promise. All right, so we take the square root. And we move the 3 over. And simplify your square root of 12. You should get 2 square roots of 3. Okay? Okay, let me just walk you through it a couple more times. Okay? So for this one, we move the 6 over. x squared minus 4x equals negative 6. Take that negative 4 take half of it and square it. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. So that is what we're going to add to both sides. When we do that, the left side factors to x minus 2, x minus 2. And the right side becomes negative 2. That's another way of explaining it, right? Another way of looking, looking at it. You take half of it, square it, and then add that number to both sides, and then this should factor to a, a perfect square binomial. So then you get x minus 2 squared, right? A squared binomial. All right, we take the square root. We move the 2 over in front. And the square root of negative 2 is just i squared to 2. All right, let's do some more. Okay. All right, we're going to move the 3 over. All right, this one's not going to be as nice, right? Because half of negative 5 squared, well, that's just 25 over 4. 
So we're adding 25 over 4 to both sides. Okay. So the left side's going to factor to a minus. It's always half of this number. If you did this correctly, it should be 5 over 2. Right? Negative 5 over 2 and negative 5 over 2 adds up to negative 5. And it multiplies to positive 25 over 4. The, left si or the right side, I'm going to have to change, get the same denominator. Oh, what am I doing? 4, 12, plus 25 over 4. So now we have a minus 5 over 2 squared equals 13 over 4. We take the square root. All right, and hopefully you realize that this is the same thing. I'll write it in a different color. This is the same thing as plus or minus the square root of 13 over the square root of 4, which is the same thing as the square, plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. All right, so that should come out nicely and, and, um, and simplify that radical there. Okay, so now when you move the negative 5, o um, negative five over 2 over, you get positive 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 2. Okay, so it's a little grosser with fractions, but you can do it. Um, you can do this, right? Get that common denominator. All right, and because I know some of you guys still struggle with your calculators, so let me show you. If you had done negative 3 plus... 25 over 4 on your calculator it would have given you a decimal all right that's gross don't we don't want a bunch of decimals because you're gonna have to take the square root right that's why I left it as fractions so if you want to turn it back into a fraction hit math number one and see how it's got your previous answer the arrow and then it's going to turn it into a fraction 13 over 4 and that's what I got 13 over 4 Okay, so check yourself before you wreck yourself. Sorry, I couldn't help it. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so now what do I do if there's a number in front? Start the same way. Move the negative five or the five over. And then to get rid of that a value, right? We want it to be a one. Well, we can't just subtract it away, all right? The way to eliminate things, the shortcuts and stuff, happen with multiplication and division. So you divide every term by that coefficient. So when we divide, we then get 1y squared, and this one turns out nice, equals, well, that's not a terrible fraction, okay? So now we just keep working. So we take that b value, half of it, square it, add it to both sides. All right, then we do, let's see, this part's going to factor to y plus one half, y plus one half. It's always half of that middle term. So one half plus one half is one, one half times one half is one fourth. Right? That's how I know I did it right. This over here, we can get a common denominator or use your calculator. So y plus a half squared equals negative 9 over 4. So when I take the square root, I get plus or minus the square root of negative 9 over 4. So we get y plus 1 half equals, well, the square root of 9 over 4 is just 3 over 2, and we're going to have an i. You can put it in the numerator or out to the side, but do not put it in the denominator. Okay, so make sure you write very neatly and cleanly, right, so I can see that. All right, make sure that you type that so the i is not underneath. Um, here, if we want, we can just keep it on top. Okay? 
All right, so hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'd be happy to go over it a bunch more times in class because I know this one, this one stumps some people, okay? And again, it just takes practice. You do it enough times, it's like second nature, okay? Trust me, it's gonna be useful, you know, later down the road, right? Especially if you're gonna take pre-calc, okay?